All right. So, uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see, you know, when we're talking about a customer immersion experience, uh, we're going to be talking. Excuse, excuse yeah. me, Andre. I'm still having yeah. issues. It says that um, my password is blocked because someone entered it too many times. Um, okay. It says Marie. Si sign, in, sign in is blocked. Okay. Go ahead and just close out of the browser, Marie, and open up a new guest browser and see if you can try getting in that way. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, try that and, and let me know how that works for you. <clears throat> okay, so what are we going to be talking about today? That is, that is the main question. So, you know, we're going to be talking today about Microsoft Teams. Uh, but really what we're going to be talking about is another layer of Microsoft Teams because what we're going to be going into uh, is some of the additional integrations uh, that you might want to be thinking about uh, when we're discussing the Teams platform. Okay, so when we're talking about Teams, right, there's going to be a lot of different uh, use case scenarios where Teams makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, we're going to have the ability to do a wide variety of things. And I'm going to go into that here in just a second, just to give everybody an overview again. Uh, but like I mentioned, main purpose today is to show you some additional use cases that might be a little further along than what you were thinking about today. So if you're here in the lab, go ahead and click on this purple T for Teams. And it should go ahead and open this up just like this. Marie, any any luck there? No, um, I'm still having the same issue. Um, um, okay, let's try. Let's see if I can get you another account. Then give me one second. I just need to find one that uh, is not in use. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Try this account. Okay, I'm gonna send you another email in the chat window, Marie. Um, let me know if this works for you. Okay. And if you wanted to quickly share your screen, um, we can do that. I'll help you sign in and then we can just get right into it just uh, to help make it quicker. TransAzureDirect.com. But guys, you'll also find that, and, and part of some of the discussions that we've been having with a lot of our clients is the ability to determine as you're planning hardware upgrades, the ability to say, "Hey, do I really need a? Uh, do I really need a full-scale PC for someone, or can I get away with utilizing web-based applications to go do their work?" Because you'll find that in Teams and Outlook, in most of the other suite. 90% 90 of the functionality that you'll find in, uh, in the Outlook, in the Office local client is available in the web. So we're finding that some of those pieces, you just have to figure out what works good for you. Yeah, and I think that's actually, that's a great point, Michael. Um, hopefully today you'll be able to see, you know, the web functionality of Teams is phenomenal. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you, just like Michael mentioned, um, I actually use Teams uh, in my actual desktop, and I actually use Teams in the browser at the same time. Today I'm working from home, so I only have access to two screens. But when I'm in the office, I actually have three screens. So I have my email on one, I have my Teams in, in my, my front screen, and then I actually have uh, my actual uh, online version of Teams in the other. So you can really use this to your advantage, and ultimately it's going to come down to, you know, what specific use cases do you want for Teams? <clears throat> but, you know, kind of just a brief overview again, and then I'll get into some of the cool updates that are, you know, on the way, and then we'll actually get into some of the features here for the lab. So, you know, if you've been using Teams already, you understand, uh, you know, why this is such a really useful application, right? I'm going to be able to uh, have access to a communication platform where I can access things through chat, over the phone. Uh, I'm going to be able to see access to my calendar. I don't have to leave Teams. I have access to all that information so that I understand what's coming up for my day. I can make phone calls. I can make video conferencing calls. I can really do ultimately <clears throat> everything that's going to make uh, my application as useful as possible, honestly, through Teams. Uh, but one of the most phenomenal use cases for Microsoft Teams that you don't see as much today 
is the integration capabilities. And so as we talk about things like power applications, right, like uh, integrating applications that are already Microsoft centric, like forms, right, uh, OneNote, uh, uh, you know, f uh, a task by planner, right, a lot of these different tools we're currently already using today, how can I actually integrate that directly into my environment, right? These are all questions we have, we should hopefully be thinking about. But before we get into that, okay, let's talk about some updates. Unfortunately, I cannot demo this for you today because this is going to be at the cutting edge of what Microsoft is doing. They announced it uh, at their developer conference, which they call Microsoft Ignite. So I know it should be live in the next couple months. I was hoping I would have it ready, Michael, for today, uh, but I haven't gotten the, the update just yet, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not sure. Have you, Michael, with like the webinar and all that cool stuff I'm about to talk about? Have you gotten that update? Not yet. Okay, yeah. I wish I could talk to you guys and actually show you, but unfortunately I can't just yet. I'll tell you one of the coolest updates that we actually have right now currently in the pipeline, which I'm very excited about myself, is some Supreme webinar functionality built into the Teams environment. So, you know, if you're here inside of Teams, and let me zoom here so that you guys can see this a little bit better. So if you're here inside of Teams, okay, Go ahead and go to calendar really quickly, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so if you're here inside of Teams, you'll remember uh, that you have actually a meet now function to just do a random meeting right away. Um, Marie, that password. Um, I'm not sure why that's not working for you. I mean, everybody else was able to get in, Marie. I know we all have the same password, so I'm assuming you're probably typing it in wrong, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure what else to say, Marie. I'm so sorry. Um, I'll never <clears throat> follow, just follow on your screen. Yeah, I think Marie, it might be just best for you just to follow along today. Unfortunately, uh, you'll still get, you'll still understand it though. Um, it's just, you know, it's always nice. I get it. Um, okay. So if we're here inside of teams, right in the calendar section, you remember we can schedule meetings. Uh, we can also, you know, uh, by for, for a variety of ways, right? I could go ahead and I could schedule a call just like this. I hover over a section. I call this a test meeting. Let's say I'll invite a couple of my friends, right? Maybe I want to invite Joe. I want to invite, uh, let's see, Megan. And then I'll go ahead and I'll invite uh, Carlos. And then I can go ahead and send them that invite. And you'll see now I have this meeting right here built directly into this Teams environment, right? You see that. Uh, that being said, I also have the ability to just click on new meeting to do the same function. Okay. However, what's going to be coming out, if you remember here to the top right, you see this drop down button. You can actually schedule these live events. We've talked about this if you've been on the 1.0 event where you have, you know, some production capabilities for a live webinar type of event where you know people can't actually see the screen necessarily sorry they can't speak uh, they can only do q a but they can see your screen they can see you presenting you can bring in presenters from across right what they're actually going to be integrating now is <clears throat> as opposed to what they call a live event they're going to have that but they're also going to have a very robust webinar platform where you can really host these top of the line webinar functionalities you built in it's got built in <clears throat> you know features that you can use for presenting purposes uh, for the purposes of actually automating some of this registration right it's going to have a registration built into it i mean it's going to be really really cool and so you know if we're already using teams for a lot of the different things that we're doing in terms of virtual meetings with uh, other members of our business other people in our industry we're now going to have that same capability in a webinar format where, you know, in my personal opinion, I always felt like, you know, Zoom really put itself over the top in that realm where I felt like Teams was better for internal communication, internal calls, internal uh, conversations with the business. But when we start talking about, you know, some of the abilities to actually host webinars, to host events, uh, you know, with outside members of your organization, I always felt that is awesome, Marie. Great to hear. I always felt like Zoom was doing a superior job there. That being said, I'm pretty confident that once we actually see this new rollout of the webinar feature, I think we're going to be able to say the same thing about Teams. So I am very much looking forward to that. I'm thinking it should be rolled out in the next month or two. Michael, let me know if I'm wrong there. Uh, but that's my understanding. In the next month or two, we're actually going to be able to see that go live. And we're going to have webinars now 
built into our team's environment so that if we're hosting any of those outside events, I can actually schedule that and have access to that directly inside of my team's environment. Super phenomenal, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Okay, what are some other things that are here on the horizon? Um, you know, what about uh, the discussions about closed captioning? So we were talking about this in uh, the 1.0 event, if you've actually heard this, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, captions here, and I'll share my meeting screen just really briefly so that you can kind of see this. Assuming these cap captions turn on, just give me one second. Let me try it one more time. So, you know, if you can see here inside of your meeting, okay, I just turned them on right now. Uh, when you actually turn on captions, and let me show you here. When you actually go ahead and you turn on captions during meetings, you can see that it actually captures what I'm saying and it transcribes it immediately using cognitive services in Microsoft, okay? The thing about this is right now, this is only available for the direct language that you're using today, right? So if I'm speaking in English, it's gonna go ahead and give me captions in English. So it's really primarily going to be used for the user so that you can understand what people are saying during the meeting and you don't have to be paying attention uh, very explicitly to exactly what, what words they're saying. I would be able to actually see it here as well and read it. That being said, what if you're interacting with somebody who can't speak your language? Right. What do I do in that situation? Well, we've reached a point now and they actually demoed it. So I know it's possible. They just haven't actually fully uh, sent it out yet to the rest of uh, the you know team's users where you're going to be able to actually use this in conjunction with another language so that as I'm here inside of teams and as I'm actually speaking in Spanish, for example, this captioning is actually going to be able to capture that, understand that I'm speaking Spanish and automatically translate that to my language of choice. So that let's say, for example, I'm trying to speak with somebody uh, in Mexico, I could speak in English and they could get it transcribed in Spanish. And if they spoke in Spanish, I could get that transcribed in English. So super awesome. You can see, I mean, this works really well right now for you know English purposes. So I'm pretty confident that uh, when this actually rolls out, uh, on a larger scale when we start talking about additional languages, I think this is going to be uh, some phenomenal, phenomenal tools that we can take advantage of. So I'm really looking forward to that, uh, and that should be really cool. Did you have anything else to add in there, Michael, on the on the captioning piece that I missed? I will I say I see close to 30 languages on the Microsoft event, and I did watch something in Mandarin just to see what it looked like, and it was, it was kind of <laughs> So, uh, you know, th there'll be a button where someone can just change the language piece that, that, that's there, and it was really kind of cool. Hey, yeah. guys, did uh, Microsoft happen to uh, mention the amount of attendees that can be a part of the webinar in Teams? Great question. I believe they said, uh, gosh, it must have been a few thousand. I, I thought it was five, and some plans had 10, 10,000. Wow, that, that's awesome. Yeah. But the important yeah. thing with that is that it's a you know built-in process where you can do the registrations, you can handle all that, and then for people that might be Dynamics customers, those registrations could be yeah. integrated directly into your CRM through that. What what about CRM integration, like uh, say HubSpot, for example? Hear anything on the horizon for that in Teams? Hmm. Uh, Good HubSpot. question. The ones that were in there, but listen, I, I, I got to say that for the for the proprietariness of everything, they, I, I've seen a lot of that in Dynamics. Wow. So I have people that are util utilizing and there's APIs. <clears throat> listen, there's a HubSpot add-in into Teams and then through Power Apps, someone could do some of that integration. And we'll talk exactly. about Power Apps and you don't have to be a programmer. So Microsoft's piece is natively, this is what they do, but since they claim to be an open company that's out there, they have a open APIs where people have integration that ties directly into it. So again, you know, like when you guys register for us, comes in there, you know, we use SharpSpring, and I have a little tool that brings it into a team, so I have lists of everything. And I don't know anything about, well, I can't say I don't know anything about programming, but just to show you that we'll get to some of those things. So webinar is definitely cool. The multi-language piece is out there. And then one of the things that might affect you or might not, and I have pictures on an Andres if you were gonna uh, um, go out there and show it, but or talk about it, was the new HoloLens. There were, there yep. 
were, were 3D in a way that one of the presenters that I was watching, it looked like that he was in the middle of the Atlanta Aquarium. Everyone knows what that big wall looks like, that whale's in there. And then um, it was like he was presenting in front of it. And then when one of his coworkers came in that wasn't part of this you know, VR world, he actually uh, came in as an avatar and they were able to go out there and interact. So the HoloLens, I think, looked a little more like glasses than this one. It, you know, so we're seeing that you know, virtual reality starting to come in in these presentations and he was presenting inside of Teams. So it was kind of cool just to show you, and that's not far off. Very yeah, cool. I mean, some super cool stuff. I'll tell you one of the really cool uses for HoloLens is uh, field services. So, you know, inside of Dynamics, and I'm not sure, you know, how how understand if this means anything to you guys, but, you know, field service organizations, they do a lot of work, you know, with their clientele, right? They may need to go on site to go help somebody with some type of issue. And what you can actually do now with HoloLens is if you have somebody on the back end that's connected and can actually communicate with you, you can actually use the HoloLens so that they can actually see what you're currently looking at so that they can actually help you in that actual discussion with the customer. Incredible stuff. So, you know, cutting edge, you know, technology, I think what Microsoft really likes to align itself with. I'll give you uh, one other additional feature uh, that I think is going to be an absolute game changer. And this really depends on how integrated you are inside of teams with your organizations. Um, you know, I'll tell you, in my specific situation, I work with uh, a large variety of organizations through teams. And so one of my biggest pain points is that if I have to actually create a brand new teams environment, I need to actually log out of this account or switch accounts in my application so that I can actually access it. Well, Microsoft is now going to actually integrate them together so that even if you have completely separate Microsoft environments, you could all see them from the same pane of glass. So I am very much looking forward to that. I think that's going to hopefully bring everything together um, and just make everything work a lot more seamlessly. So that he's kind of talking about, uh, Andres, if you just open up Teams on the up, yeah, you know, to just show a channel, you'd be able to share a channel. You know, you'd be able to share. You, you don't have to, you know, have access to it, but you'd be able to go out there and just uh, share here, a channel. So let me I can show you here in my in just my regular uh, Teams environment if I have it here open. Let's see where are you. Sharing so has always been an issue sometimes. So if I'm here inside of my regular Teams environment, you see I have multiple teams that I'm a part of. <laughs> so you see this. Uh, I have to naturally actually select on each of these to actually get a piece of in, inside of them, right? And I also have a completely different account that I only access through the web. And so if I actually do that now, I'm going to be able to see them on my channel list here if I go into the Teams, all in that same window. So it's going to be pretty cool. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think it's something that's going to be, again, uh, just it, Teams is all about making it easier for people to function with one another, for people to get organized yes. and get things accomplished. Ooh, and let me go ahead and click on the yeah. mute here. So the key for that is that right now you need IT or someone to go out there. It becomes a little difficult to manage. And now you, know, you can interact directly from your, team, uh, your team's channels with third-party people that come in there, share files, chat, go back and forth without having, you know, IT have to jump through hoops to make all this work. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, guys. Good morning. Uh, this is by... Um, I just wanted to give my a little bit of feedback. Yes. Uh, can you guys imagine going through the obstacles that we're going through just to join a meeting like this when you have a corporate meeting? Well, um, go ahead. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I would like to say that uh, it's my frustration with Teams. Mm -hmm. Teams has such a great vision. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the integration is is, is, is is lacking something. Okay. Because I love to use it, but every time that I use it, something doesn't work. The uh, uh, your, um, username doesn't work. Your password doesn't work. At times, it's, it's, okay. it's something random because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And I love the, 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 the concept. It's just that it's so difficult, too many steps. Is there any way that somebody can suggest to simplify it? 
I know they tried to do a single sign on, mm -hmm. but the single sign on is not really working because every time that you change, if you use your, your, your username of Microsoft in your computer, and if you don't use it correctly or your computer changes the, 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 the password, it, it takes a ripple effect. I don't know, do you guys follow what I'm saying? Are, are you not accessing it through the application? You're only doing it through the browser? No, no, no. Right now, I have Teams in my computer, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I use Teams. However, if I use Teams with through my computer, it won't let me go to your um, to your uh, site because you guys mm -hmm. using the web browser. It, it seems like it conflicts with himself because it's, they try to make so much security around that that it creates a ring of isolation. So yeah. I finally now was able to join the, the, the call. I mean, I've been trying to join since 9.30. It took me only, what, 53 minutes? How, how are you trying and, to And, and I believe that's a, that's, that's a frustration from other users as well, like the lady that you ended up saying, hey, you're, you, you, you're not typing the correct password because everybody else is using it. And this was as simple as just copy and paste the password. But anyways, I'm sorry to, to, to I'll, give I'll some feedback. It. I'll take it floor. perspective. It's very difficult to see what everyone's configuration is that goes out there. And yes, security is meant to be a little difficult. And at times I'm managing multiple teams things, but I think it's just understanding what, not saying that you don't understand, but understanding what you were trying to do and, and work those paths. So I think Microsoft does try to make it, you know, somewhat simpler, but they have, we all have to worry about security. And, you know, just to give you an example, you know, from, from my immediate Teams meetings, you know, I got a dedicated Teams device that's here. You know, this thing is just for my Teams meetings. And we're having clients put these in their conference rooms. We have clients putting things like this. And I have clients that are putting, you know, Zoom devices in because they have the same problem with corporate Zoom. So I think, you know, it's a challenge that we're all going to deal with of getting the right person logged in at the right time. And, it, and it's a function of, what, what their desktop is, what their security, their company security is, and those types of things. I'm not defending it, and I, I don't disagree. No, yes. I'm, just, I'm just trying to picture, I'm just trying to picture a CEO or a CFO trying to log in. Yeah, you know, but this is actually okay. a great conversation. How, how did you try and log in, um, if you wouldn't mind me asking? Um, I'm curious oh, why I was you giving some names. <laughs> I just tried to log in. Through the web uh, web base, okay. and when I was going through the web base, he says, "Not, uh, I'm not. You're not. Uh, we're not. I'm sorry, not uh, not letting you in. Sorry, not letting you in." And it seems like when I put cancel, and I said, uh -huh. "Okay, cancel," he went in, started buffering, and then let me in. I was following the instructions on how to log in. But oh, after so I you're not up, talking. You're talking about this team's environment. This this this, uh, specifically, this, this one right now. This this ah, this one going gotcha. on right now. Okay, I thought you were talking about the meeting. I was like, oh, you should have just clicked on the link. <laughs> okay. The reason I'll tell you the reason you probably had an issue with this is because I use these accounts for a lot of different sessions across the country. And See, so yeah, this dummy, now, dummy dummy accounts. Yeah, these are dummy accounts. And so the, Microsoft gets a lot of security signals on these accounts because they get signed in across the country. And so what, the reason I think it was probably gave all of you guys issues today is I was just doing this in California for California customers. Then all of a sudden people are signing in in Florida. So it's um, that brings up a lot of red flags for Microsoft. That's why it makes it a little bit tougher for you. I'm assuming that's probably where the issue kind of came from. So I'm going to agree with you, Andres, because yeah. if here's a good example. And for the gentleman who had a problem, um, we have some users that travel. And if Microsoft picks up a team sign on from a different location that was originally created, it raises red flags. They have to go through two two factor authentication again. And this also happened to me moving from Florida to Arkansas. I had the, uh, the hardest time trying to log back in because I wasn't at the IP address and everything that was originally created for my account. So I definitely get that Andres. Yeah, I think that was probably what it was. So sorry to hear that, but I'm glad you were able to get in just for the next stuff to actually get into. So I think this is a good time to transition. 
Um, cause we kind of got, you know, so, you know, full, we're looking forward. What are some of the cool features that are coming out? But, you know, currently today, what are some of the integrations that you could potentially be thinking about for your team's environment that you might not be fully taking advantage of today? Okay. First thing I'm going to go ahead and get into is this concept of a virtual agent. Has anybody ever heard of a chatbot before? Anybody willing to give, uh, the team, the, the group here, a quick explanation? Okay, well, if nobody's heard of a, of a chat bot, this should hopefully be uh, a cool just kind of demo for you then. Um, so just to give you a little bit of context here, I'm sure you've all interacted with a chat bot before. Maybe you do know, you just didn't want to say anything. Uh, but you typically see two types, okay, of chat bots. Uh, you'll see typically a front, front end uh, customer facing chat bot. Uh, that you probably have interacted with on a website, right? You ever jump on a website and they've got this uh, message that appears, hey, how can we help you today? Or uh, what are you looking to, to, to learn about today? Or, or how can I redirect you, right? And really the purpose of that bot is for optimizing the time that is spent for customer service scenarios on the actual website, right? Um, if the person is actually coming in and they're exploring, how can I use this chat bot to direct that count, that individual to the appropriate person internally so that they can have a more intelligent conversation? That's probably the bots that you've actually had experience with. And typically they're quote unquote dumb bots where they actually don't have Luis or artificial intelligence through Microsoft actually integrated. So it's really just working off of what's called a knowledge base. OK, and all the knowledge base is is a list of questions and a list of answers. <clears throat> you might see this, for example, you can take a knowledge base that's built from the FAQ on the website and actually build that directly into the bot. So that if somebody were to ask a question, how much does this service cost? If that question is already available in the FAQ, that bot is going to be able to quickly actually send that answer to the user. So again, you're automating some of those processes of having conversations with customer service scenarios and hopefully redirecting that individual to the appropriate party internally. Okay, You'll see that used a lot. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal tool, um, especially if you get a lot of traffic to the website. Uh, my personal opinion, don't pop it up right away. You know, people get if I'm on the website, I want to look a little bit. Give me at least a minute or two, and then you can go ahead and pop the bot up if you want to have a conversation. But my point is that is an external facing bot. Okay, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about today, because when we're talking about teams, there's really not going to be a need for you to have an external facing bot that is meant for your website. Okay, that's the primary reason. That's the primary way that people are actually taking advantage of them. When we're talking about <clears throat> integrations directly into teams, I want you to just kind of have an open mind here to think about, you know, what kind of virtual agent would be useful for your own business purposes. Uh, and I'll give you a couple examples that I've seen personally be used and we'll actually be able to demo uh, and get a feel for uh, one of these scenarios. First scenario I'm going to give you. OK, let's say, for example, uh, you're an organization where, uh, you know, there is a very robust onboarding program for brand new individuals that are coming into the company. And so there's going to be a lot of moving parts. Uh, there's going to probably be a lot of questions that that individual might have. And so instead of having to spend human resources, uh, uh, literal human resources, other individuals, their time in the company to actually walk them through a lot of these processes, you might be able to actually integrate a virtual agent or a chat bot directly into their team site so that they ever have any questions about this onboarding process and getting ready to be a brand new employee for the organization. They would actually be able to ask the bot any one of those questions. And because of the fact that you can actually integrate artificial intelligence, cognitive service capabilities into the actual chat bot, you're going to be able to have it actually mirror human uh, intellect and human conversation so that it's not only working off of that quote unquote knowledge base. You probably will want to give it you know, a knowledge base that has to do with a lot of the internal policies inside the organization. Uh, but you're also going to want to have it you know, in an in intelligent bot so that if it ever get asked, gets asked a question that is just completely out of left field, 
they're going to be able to interact still with that individual in an intelligent manner. And so that's that first concept, again, of that um, virtual agent um, that you're having for onboarding of employees. I'll give you another example that I've seen be very popular as well, which is this concept of a help desk. OK, IT is oftentimes, you know, some of the individuals in the organization, they don't want to be spending time in break fix scenarios where all of a sudden I can't connect to my VPN. Um, my computer is giving me some issues. They're typically more worried about the actual technology infrastructure of the business. They want to focus their time and their efforts on optimizing the business when it comes to technology. They don't want to be spending time uh, helping you fix your VPN connection, right? Not to say that it's not their job. I'm just, they're trying to automate their workflows. And so, you know, one of the ways that I've seen these virtual agents get taken advantage of quite often is by actually integrating these help desk chatbots directly into Teams. And ultimately what you'll see here and why we're having this conversation and why I think it's so cool is not the fact that this help desk is going to be awesome, which it is. But it's the fact that you can integrate this into the actual um, application that you're using to do the majority of your work, right? I'm going to be using Teams as my front end digital workspace to accomplish a lot of the goals throughout my day. And so I want to be able to work from a location where I have access to uh, you know, all the different resources that I need to accomplish my goals. And so in this specific scenario, right, it's an individual, again, that's running into some type of issue. And so as opposed to having to go directly to IT, I could actually have that bot available to me, available to my organization, so that they can actually use that resource first. Once the problem has been strictly identified and I still need additional help, they will at least at this point know exactly what the needs are. They won't have to have that conversation and they can again optimize the time that they're spending working on these types of issues. OK, so those are two you know, pretty good examples that can hopefully highlight the ways uh, that you can take advantage of these bots inside of your organization. And so what I want to do today uh, is I actually want to show you how you can make that a central piece of your team's environment. <clears throat> so if you look here inside of Teams, uh, towards the bottom here, there's this button that says apps. OK, so if you're here inside of the Teams demo, go ahead and click on apps. OK, what you'll notice here is that this is actually one of the places where you can begin integrating uh, these third party applications or these proprietary applications that you're developing for your business. Right. If I go to all. And I just keep scrolling. <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, the amount of applications that are now actually integrate that are uh, able to be integrated directly into teams now is continuing to grow. It seems like every day. I mean, that's just going to keep going. Um, in this specific scenario, though, we're not necessarily worried about these third party applications. We'll get into them here in just a second. But what we're talking about here is what we call our built for applications for the organization. In this case, right, as you can see, given the emails, right, uh, we are uh, at Azure Direct. It's my email is Paul at Azure Direct. So naturally, my my uh, actual organization is technically called Azure Direct. And so what you can see here is that I actually have some applications that were directly built and integrated into this specific application infrastructure. What I actually did, OK, is you come in here. You see towards the bottom, it says submit to app catalog. If I were to select on this, I could actually go ahead and go through the process of submitting an application, right? So if you're already the IT administrator, you wouldn't have to do this step. Uh, this is assuming you don't have all the controls. You would actually just be able to do it right away. But assuming you're not and you want to actually put you know, this app and request for it to be available to you inside of your team's environment, you'd come here to submit. You would actually go ahead and you'd submit an application and you need to go ahead and actually upload what you call the manifest so that it can actually get ready to be used inside of Teams. And so what you can see when I actually do that, if I go back to built for Azure Direct, I can see all the different apps that have been created and improved by my technology team to actually be used directly inside of this team's environment. In this specific scenario, we're talking about virtual agents, right? So we're talking about integrating these virtual agents, these chat bots directly into my team's environment. And so you can see here, I have a help desk bot that's already been integrated. So if you're here, go ahead and click on this and click on open. 
so you can actually see how this works. Okay, so I'll give you a second. Go ahead and click on that, open it up, and you'll be able to take a look here. So you see I've done a lot of these different examples here just to kind of give you, but I'll do this again, right? So for example, uh, I can say um, I am having tech issues. Okay, so feel free to submit something if you want here to the bot. Works just the same. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. So I'm having tech issues. It's going to take a second here to register. What's going to happen is it's going to recognize that I have an issue. And typically, once it recognizes this, it goes ahead and it basically starts automating this process. I'm hoping this will load up here in just a second. Is there a question? Let me see. Hold up. Share your screen. Uh, Paul, can you not share? Can you not see my screen? Let me unshare here. I saw your screen though. You saw my screen? Okay. Share it one more time. So I can go ahead here so you can see. So what you'll see is, for example, right? I'm letting it know, hey, my VPN is not working. Okay, so I'm telling it that my VPN is having some issues. So what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and basically give it, say, okay, here's the request. Welcome to our automated help desk. What sort of application are you having trouble with? Say something like VPN or laptop. I can let it know, okay, my VPN is not working. So let me know, okay, we can certainly help with that issue. Please give us a brief explanation of what's happening. So I give it an explanation every time I log on, it starts crashing. They say, okay, got it. Anybody experiencing issues like this? I say yes, I say no, I say not sure. Again, this is going to correspond with the types of questions, the types of information you want to pull, right? So what type of information are you looking to provide the IT team as they go ahead and they try and solve these potential problems, right? Depending on that, that's how you're going to decide the flow of these questions. In this case, I say no, okay, then they let me know, okay, how urgent it is. I let them know this is low, medium, or high, and then they say, roger that, which team do you belong to? And then again, this is going to have to be customized. What specific teams inside your organization are a part of this that you want to apply? In this case, I would select one, and then I would say not sure, and they say got it, and actually start sending the request through. So, you know, you can see as you actually take advantage of this bot, it's going to start automating this uh, service of actually giving you feedback and providing that information to your team to solve these types of problems. So, you know, for me, really, I think the question that I'm going to pose back to the people that are here on the call with us today is, you know, is this something that you see value in? You know, I'd love to get somebody's feedback. Maybe you don't. Uh, you know, everybody's got a different organization. They got different needs. For some people, it applies. Maybe for others, it doesn't. Um, I'd love to get some feedback, though, if anybody's willing to share. And Michael, if you wanted to jump in and add anything else, by all means, please. Uh, sure. So, you know, this is just a place to put the bots. I will tell you that on the LAN Infotech website for about a year and a half, we've been using a bot for, you know, automated requests that come in. So if you start chatting, if you're a Bank of, Amer Bank of America customer, as an example, and their app, Erica, is what they call you're looking to find and then there's plenty of companies that actually sell these bot type applications to solve information or you're buying a pre-done database we're just giving you the app the ability to pop it into a teams channel if you use the communication throughout your company is teams that's right anybody have any questions on that go sorry, you go there sorry. are plenty of demo bots that are out there. There's a secretary bot that's free inside of Teams. Um, there's a travel bot. You know, think of it as saying, need to go from, you know, Fort Lauderdale to Las Vegas tomorrow. And, you know, in the back end, you just don't have time to sit on these things. The bot goes in the background and finds information. Same thing yep. with their, you know, there's a Zoom bot. There's a, there's a few other bots that are in place that they have to go out there and, uh, and, and just do the searching for you as well as answer some questions instead of you hitting all the Google searches. That's right. <clears throat> and again, you know, this is all about automation, right? How can I make everybody in your organization work more efficiently, work more effectively, solve problems quicker? That's what we're trying to accomplish here. As you can see, right, bots might be something uh, that you can think about in terms of actually organizing this internally for your own purposes. Okay, so that's the help desk bot, just to kind of give you a brief example. Anybody have any questions before I move into another one of the topics about bots in general?
could be external facing, could it be internal. Um, I'd love to get anybody's feedback if anybody's willing to share, but I totally get it if you don't want to speak as well. Anybody have any thoughts? Uh, Paul, were you going to say something? I didn't want to cut you off, brother. Uh, no, I'm I'm okay, in cool. the midst of creating my own bot right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Happy so to hear that. Answer Andre's questions? No, I think uh, he covered that pretty, pretty good. Uh, everything's perfect. Thanks, guys. Awesome. All right. So <clears throat> that is bots. Hopefully that means uh, that – or actually, hold up. Let me see. There's something in the conversation. Okay. That is great. For my clients, I see the use differently. Can my client answer questions from a bot and the client's answer goes on a former application? Absolutely, Marie. So uh, you can really organize the capturing of this information however you decide. Um, you know, obviously, this is probably not going to be something that you can do yourself. You probably need a little bit more expertise in terms of creating the connections between the responses and actually integrating them into a workflow so that they're added into an Excel and actually ultimately sent out somewhere. So, you know, you can really make this as creative as you want it to be, depending on how you want to capture the information, how you want to use it. Uh, ultimately, it's going to come down to what problem are we trying to solve? What applications do we need to get there? And what relationship do we need to establish between those applications to do it? So great question, Marie. Uh, that should not be an answer. That should not be uh, an issue at all. So thanks for the question. That's awesome. So those are virtual agents, okay? They definitely have a use case. And again, the beauty is... I can integrate this into my team's environment, okay? But what about other types of applications, okay? Uh, we've talked about third-party application. I'll talk about that here in just a second. But, you know, what about applications that I need to actually develop to solve a very specific business problem that I'm actually going through right now myself? How can I potentially, uh, you know, create something that's going to solve that issue, but on top of that, also solve that issue in a way where I don't have, uh, let's say, for example, the technical expertise to uh, actually start running commands and doing this and building it out through PowerShell inside of the Azure portal, for example. What are my options? Well, I'll tell you, one of the beautiful pieces of the Microsoft 365 suite, I'm going to click back here on office.com so you guys can see this. You have a wide variety of different applications that are built into this suite of tools. One of these applications is actually called Power Apps, okay? This is going to be this purple, light purple button that you see right here towards the bottom. It looks like a, like a square that's sideways. I can click on this. And what you'll see here is actually going to take me to the Power Apps portal, right? So what can we do here? Well, you can see we can go ahead and actually build business applications fast. We can create apps that connect your data, your work across web and mobile. Uh, but really what, you know, what we're able to do here with Power Applications is that we can develop proprietary and even simple applications that solve a very specific business problem. OK, uh, here I'll show you a couple things, you know, just in terms of, OK, what does that mean? You know, uh, give me some examples that will help. OK, here, let me show you. So if you come in here uh, inside of this Teams environment and Power Apps under the Create tab, uh, what you can see is that you can go ahead and take a look here. And see all of the different. Uh, actual templates that are available for you inside of Teams. So not only do you have the ability to actually go ahead and see this, you have the ability to actually go ahead and use templates to build this out from here as well. Right. So for example, uh, do you need a customized application to, let's say, for example, uh, get a very simple way for you to manage onboarding tasks? Or let's say, do you need a very specific application to go ahead and start tracking your budget expenses? Or maybe you want a customized application that you can use as a way to go ahead and fundraise for nonprofit purposes, right? A lot of different ways to think about this, a lot of different tools that you can ultimately think about for using inside of your business. 
But the beauty here is not only number one, do I not have to have coding experience, technical expertise to actually create this. Uh, I'm just going to need a vision and I'll probably need to work uh, with somebody uh, who can actually help me do this uh, through Power Apps. OK, um, obviously, my suggestion would be Len and Voltec to help you kind of just strategize on how to do this appropriately um, and to really see what are some of the problems that I'm going to be solving here through these power applications. But the beauty again, and I've already mentioned this a few times, I'm going to keep mentioning this because that's the purpose of the lab today is that you're going to be able to see that you can actually integrate these directly into your team's environment. OK, that's the beauty, because if Teams is my workspace, if it's my digital uh, work location and I can integrate these power apps that solve those specific functions, I am really getting something of value here. So I'm going to go ahead and get back into my Teams environment just to kind of show you. Okay, if I'm here inside of Teams, I'm going to go back to the application section. And you can see here, um, I can actually go ahead and you know create bots, as you can see we we're talking about earlier. Or if I go back to built for Azure Direct, guess what? I built an expenses tracker directly here from one of those templates. Now I did not customize this at all. This is 1,000% out of the box. Uh, I did not go through the pain of having to actually uh, align this exactly with my business. Uh, that's really where the work is going to come in, right? Because as you're customizing the function of this bot, you need to also customize that function so that it matches the appropriate pieces that are built inside of your organization. And so you're probably going to want somebody that's got some experience there that can help establish those connections appropriately so that this functions uh, very well. But this is just a very simple example so that you can kind of just take a get an idea, right, of some of the different ways that you can take advantage of these. So I'm going to click on open. OK, just to show you a visual here. And, uh, you know, just to have a little bit of fun here, we'll, we'll have an example here. Let's say uh, Serge was going out to lunch and he was going to take, uh, let's say, Kenny, uh, because Kenny is a potential customer that he's trying to wine and dine. OK, and so he tells Kenny, you know, have whatever you like, take the, you know, the full uh, steak with the wine, whatever you want, brother. He goes ahead, he gets the bill and he realizes, oh, my gosh, I am not going to pay for this out of pocket. OK, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the company and they're going to pay for this lunch. Um, and so in this specific scenario, right, we're obviously in a situation where there's not a very simple or organized fashion uh, for actually going in expensing these types of transactions inside the business. And so in this scenario, you know, I understand that for my business, I need to create a process where people can go ahead and expense against these types of situations in a very simple manner. And so what I did is I ended up creating a power app that can solve this. And again, the beauty is it's integrated directly inside of the team's environment. I can go ahead. You can see here under my expenses and please, you know, play around with this again. This is completely out of the box. There's no customization here. It's not going to be pretty, uh, but it'll show you a visual that you can kind of see. OK, so I'm going to be able to go here to open. I can open up a brand new um, uh, request. Let's say the title is going to be lunch with a prospect right the approver so this is where the customization comes into play who's going to be the list of you know three or four approvers inside the organization that this gets sent to in this case let's say it's thomas anderson and then the cost center right what are we going to be doing here in this case i'll just say this is for um you know the uh, contoso department and then what you'll see is when i actually create this request Right, and I'd be able. I have to fill this this number, obviously. Uh, but when I do this, this is now going to be sent with those details directly to Thomas. He's going to get a request through his email, most likely. It's going to tell him, "Hey, I need you to go ahead and jump into uh, this Power application to then go ahead and approve this." Once he approves this, this is all going to be attached and again integrated with a list in SharePoint, so that all of that information flows to the appropriate locations. We have a tracking history of how that process actually automated itself, the information that it captured. And now, as you can see, we are solving that specific business pain point with a customized application to meet those needs. OK, and so now my question to everybody here on the call, uh, and I guarantee you there is one problem that you're probably thinking about right now. 
man, I would love to have an application to solve that, right? That's the decision. That's the question that you're going to have to think about when it comes to these power apps. I think these are extremely powerful. Um, I think they have, they're probably the most uh, interesting topic for me out of everything that I'm going to be discussing today, because I think these have a very impactful potential if they're integrated uh, appropriately. So power apps are absolutely something you should be taking full advantage of. And if you're not, well, you're not getting the full use of the team's platform. Uh, Michael, did you want to add anything else in there on power apps for the team here? I think that you'll find that there are a ton of things that you could do with power apps. And it's really a good thing to go out there and tie data from one place to the other. Yeah. And it's simple as, hey, you know what? Every time I get an email from Mike, I want to, it has an attachment, save it to the SharePoint drive. I mean, inside the Power Apps, uh, Power Apps uh, console, you'll see that there's hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of uh, applications that are already pre-done. I'll call them scripts. I see there's a question, can the supervisor approve it your email? I guess, let me see the whole chat on that. Now, what if the supervisor does not have to use the app? Can a supervisor approve it via email? Um, I guess this is on the form piece. So basically, one of the pieces is the ability to go out and approve, if that's what you're asking, Marie, on that. Yeah. You know, we can go out there and do approval processes directly through Teams. You know, there's a there. You could actually utilize a little further uh, apps, uh, power apps that are already pre-designed that you might be doing something in SharePoint. I could base it on deadlines. I mean, it's endless the things that you could actually do with this. Yeah, Marie, my answer would be that you absolutely can customize this according to what your needs are. Uh, however, uh, I would suggest that you know people hopefully are interested in learning about how this can be impactful. Because again, the reason I'm talking about it today, Marie, is I want teams to be a central piece of what you do throughout your business. I'm not saying it has to be, but you know, if we're really taking full advantage of Teams, we're not only using it for a lot of the other great features, we're also using it for these integration capabilities. And so I would suggest, uh, unless you just are completely opposed to Teams, that um, there is a little bit of education probably that needs to take place there. But you know, I mean, you can absolutely um, you know, really make this work for however you want to do it. Power apps are separate from Teams itself. You can create power apps on their own that have nothing to do with Teams if you wanted to, right? It could be completely separate from this. Um, but again, for me, the power of this is how can I actually integrate this directly? So, and yes, Marie, I'm going to go into planner tasks right now, actually next. Um, but I, I'd love to get some feedback on this specific because I love this talk. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll just pick on somebody. Maybe Claudia, if you wouldn't mind uh, jumping in with us here today. Is there anything that you can think about you know, that might power apps might be a solution for anything that, um, you know, you think could be helpful for your business purposes. I'd love to get your feedback. If you wouldn't mind sharing. Um, you gotta... There you go. Now, I don't see anything that at least on our end um, that I can think of. Okay, what about scheduling? Uh, do you have any issues with that, with organizing, uh, you know, workers as they bring new shifts? What about um, automation of emails so that they get sent to appropriate parties or anything like that? Does that ring a bell? Uh, yeah, the help. automation of emails, definitely. Okay, then maybe there's a situation there where Power Apps can be useful for communication purposes. What I'm hopefully trying to show is you know i honestly think power apps can be applicable for almost any situation you just need to be creative and kind of understanding what the root cause of the problem is so just kind of wanted to mention that yeah hey duck hi. yeah duck you want to jump in hi how you doing um good doing well um i'm my name is duckinson charles and i'm with Glo okay. um, global crossing airlines so while you was going through the power app and all the integration and, and such um one thing um we are trying to integrate is such as a uh, we we were trying to find a way to track our assets and we wanted something that could be building into microsoft like such as um we want to track our computers um 
um, monitors and stuff. So we went into the asset management system while you mm-hmm. were going through the apps. And I kind of saw um, something related. Maybe you can just give us a brief detail on how I could find a solution to that. Interesting. Okay, so you're you're thinking about um, almost like tracking inventory, right? Almost. Yeah, tracking yeah, assets. So we don't we don't want something that is separated. If it could just be built in to our services, such as like you're saying, you showing like this expense tracker. If we could have something, if we could implement something similar that we don't have to go outside of, you know. Um, we don't we don't it's would it would be easier for us to have to use something that's all together. Yeah, I mean I might think about potentially and Michael, if you have any additional thoughts here, by all means, but I'm looking here at the templates right right away. Uh, I'm looking right. at an asset checkout demo. This is just a template, you know. And this might be okay. something uh, that, you know, maybe just one on one we can have a further discussion, maybe with Michael and the right. team about how to do this. Uh, but okay. right away, just from your needs, I mean, I'm thinking right here, this asset checkout, you can see you can reserve the tools and equipment, accurately calculating available inventory and much more. And again, this is okay. going to be built directly into team. So I think that's an awesome example, you guys. I mean, thank you for, for jumping in there. I think that's great. You know, it's okay, so if, if we could if we could talk about it and have um be much more detail, and it will be a great thing, like it will be great thing for us. Yeah. So. so I will tell you just the purposes of a lot of these a lot of these pieces of information that are out there. These are just ways to organize the the data. You know, there are tools that Microsoft provides, like Intune and things along those lines gather information direct from the computers. Monitors are one of those that I just bring up that are really difficult to get the serial number and making information. From. So we can um, we can uh, take it. So you're, you're with uh, you're with GlobalX. Yes. Yeah. So we can uh, we can go and uh, have have a conversation uh, on that. But once it's in there and you need to present the data. That's where teams and some of these templates can have the ability to go out there and help you organize that. Okay. Absolutely. Great example. Right. Appreciate you jumping in there, brother. That's awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Right. That's awesome. <clears throat> okay. So we talked about you know some of the new features in Teams. We talked about virtual agents. We talked about these power applications. Let's talk about third-party application integration or Microsoft application integration. How does that work? How can I function? Okay. So there's going to be a variety of different ways to do this. As you can see with these pieces, right, you can actually integrate apps directly into your Teams interface right here. Okay. So you see I can actually integrate any of these things right away. Additionally, I can do these in a couple other locations. I can go to my chat. I don't know if you guys knew this. This is a new feature. I can actually go to one of my chats here, let's say, for example, and you see there's a plus. I can actually integrate some of these applications directly into my chat function as well. There's more limited features here. There's not as much as everything else, but there is absolutely still some chat functions available here that you can, some chat applications. Additionally, on top of that, if I go to my calendar and we'll talk about this next, okay, I can actually go ahead, you see the plus here inside of meetings, I can now actually integrate some of these functions directly into meetings as well. Right. So you can see here in this case, for example, one of the ones that I'll be covering in a bit here is forms integration, uh, which is something that, uh, you know, we've done here quite often during actual you know, presentations like this as a way to, you know, keep engagement up, keep the conversation flowing and ultimately get some feedback from the group here uh, as a way to go ahead and actually do that. OK, and you can actually use forms there as a way to do it. Michael, I'm not sure if you wanted to integrate it just to get us started so I can add a question for the end of the session today. For some reason, when I'm not the meeting organizer, sometimes you can't add those as easily. So if you wouldn't mind doing it. Doing, just click it for this meeting and then I'll add the question in after. So don't worry about it. OK, great. But what we're talking about today, what I wanted to show you is I wanted to actually show you the integrations directly into channels. So if you guys remember inside of Teams, Right, we're gonna have the security layer, which is gonna be the team itself, right? For example, this sales team or this Contoso test team, where we're gonna be able to actually go ahead and create the barrier so that we are making sure that whoever's accessing what's inside of this team is a user who should have access to it. 
But once you actually get through that layer of protection, we are now inside of the individual channels where we actually have the workspace to accomplish things inside of this application. So in this specific scenario, right, uh, we have general, we have collaboration and leads, for example, in these are all different channels inside of the sales team. And so what you'll see what I can actually do is inside of, let's say, the general channel for the sales team, I'm going to be able to actually integrate applications here as well. So you see the plus. This is going to be one of the, uh, for me, most powerful places uh, to actually go ahead and start integrating things it's directly inside of the channels because when we're actually working on files, we're working on documents, we're accomplishing things inside of the team's application, we're going to be doing a lot of that directly here inside of these channels. And so, you know, what I wanted to show you here is just a couple examples of the types of different applications that we can actually in integrate here into these different uh, situations. So, they were asking about um, tasks of my planner. I'll, sh I'll show you that in just a second. But I'll tell you one of my favorites here is OneNote. I think this is uh, something that needs to be done for pretty much every channel. Reason for that is, you know, I want to be able to actually have a notebook that's tied directly to each individual channel. So that if I'm having a meeting, okay, that has to do with the sales team in the general channel, I can go ahead and have a notebook that's directly assigned to this, right? I'll tell you the way that I use this most often is I create a meeting notes section. So you see you have a section inside of the notebook and inside of each of those sections, you then have individual pages, okay? These pages is where you're actually going to be writing that information as notes, but inside of each of those sections, you're going to be organizing those different pages. So for example, I'll just have meeting A just to make this super simple and I'll have a meeting B. And beauty is, as I type, you know, I'll just type some random stuff here for you. All of this is going to be saved directly in this notebook so that as I'm actually working through this, and let's say, for example, Claudia couldn't make the meeting because she was out that day, she could actually go ahead and get back here into this notebook, right? Let's say she was in the files. She could get into that notebook because it's a collaborative environment. She'd be able to open up this meeting B in this specific meeting notes section and actually correspond, add additional information or review the information that's already available inside of this specific channel. So, you know, you can see the, the integration capabilities are phenomenal. And ultimately, just like we saw with Power Apps, I think you need to identify how could I potentially make this run smoother, run better, run more effectively so that I can actually go ahead and do this in a way uh, that's going to be most efficient for my specific purposes. So in this case, if you're worried about notes, I think the OneNote application is a great idea. Okay, so that's OneNote. What about tasks by planner? I think that's another great example, something that I use myself. So you see right here it says tasks by planner. And um, you know, if you have any specific questions, Marie, please let me know about this application. Um, but you see, okay, it looks like I already have another plan that's called tasks. I'm just going to call this tasks too, so you can kind of see this and I'll click save. And so you'll see this is going to go ahead and create this tasks to planner and it's going to integrate directly into this channel. So the beauty of this that you'll be able to see is I'm going to be able to assign specific tasks that need to be completed. I'm going to be able to provide a due date for when I need them to be done by. And I'm going to be able to assign them to specific individuals inside of the organization. Okay. The beauty of this is it's kind of annoying. Okay. And what I mean by that is not it's going to be terrible or anything like that. It's on top of you. So, you know, if I assigned a task to Michael and it was due on Friday, reason I say it's annoying is it's going to let you know if it's Friday and it's due and you have not completed it, well, guess what? I'm probably going to get an email about it. Right, So it's going to stay on top of people. It's going to make sure that they accomplish what was set out for them to do uh, and, and you continue to get better at uh, being efficient throughout the workday. So I'm going to give you an example. Right, Let's say I needed somebody to uh, complete a marketing budget. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a due date for this. Let's say I want this to be dis uh, completed by Monday. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign this to Arnold. I'm going to assign this to Bradley. Let's say Gavin and then Brenda. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that task. 
So now all of these different individuals, right? Everybody that I just assigned this task to should have received an activity notification that they've been assigned a task in the sales team's general channel about completing a marketing budget. Additionally, I'm gonna be able to open this up a little bit further to be a, bit, a little bit more granular with my decisions, right? I could say here in the notes section, I could say, I need this done first thing on Monday morning. I could add a checklist, right? So maybe I want a itemized budget. I want five different activities and maybe I want it to be a, a three page report. I don't know, right? Just give me a few examples. But the beauty of this is any one of them who I assign this to Arnold, Gavin, they could come in here and actually let me know. I've completed an itemized budget. I've got five different activities. I just need to complete the three page report. And so you're gonna be able to see, okay, they've got two out of the three checklist items completed. This is due on 412. They know exactly who this is assigned to and they're in the processes of actually completing this. And so this is you know, one of the phenomenal ways for you to organize this. And I'll tell you one of the ways that you can do this really well is you can actually create buckets that are gonna pertain to specific projects that you might be working on. I'll give you an example. One thing that I used to do when I was onboarding new clients, I would actually create week one and week two all the way up to week eight, okay? These different buckets are gonna be locations where I can go ahead and create these tasks that correspond to these specific um, uh, situations. So in this case, right, I have an eight week program, let's say, and I wanna go ahead and assign tasks on a week by week basis so that somebody can go ahead and take a look back and say, okay, you know what? Uh, based on what we've done so far, uh, I've completed week one, I've completed week two, okay, I'm on to week three. These are the next things that I need to go ahead and take, take care of. Uh, it's really going to be up to you. How do I want to take full advantage of this? How do I want to uh, really make this work for my specific purposes, right? Uh, I think that's uh, definitely a question that you need to ask yourself. As you can see, uh, tasks can absolutely be a critical piece of how you do these, okay? Great question, Marie. Uh, you are reading my mind. That is next. Did you have any questions on uh, this planner, this planner tasks, Marie? No. Okay, that's good. Um, so, Andres, have a question? I have a yeah. I have a question based on this. Uh, the planners, does the planner has a follow up? Do they send follow up emails or follow up notifications to the end users? Yeah. So typically, this is uh, based on timing. So. Uh, if it's due that day, you're probably going to get a notification about it. If it's past due, you're going to get an email every every couple of days, I believe. So uh, they're absolutely it, this is integrated with Outlook and with Teams. So yes. Is there a threshold or is there a um, something that you can preset to send notifications? Uh, great question. I'm not sure, Michael, if you know the answer to that, but my assumption, I haven't done it myself, uh, to be frank, but. I know with a lot of these different applications on the back end, you can customize uh, how you want that to be done. So I would not doubt that it's possible. I just haven't done it myself. But I would probably say if I, if you you know had to make me decide, I would say yes, it's probably possible just based on Microsoft's uh, track record. And also yes. another way to look at it is using the SharePoint list and go out there and, and assign that so it syncs to the calendar. And then lastly, you could always use a power app that goes out there just to verify it to a supervisor note. Yep. So, you know, you can be creative. I mean, we're talking about separate issues, right? Uh, but integrating them together is really where you can get the engine going uh, appropriately. So a lot of different things to think about. If, Hopefully, yeah, you, want to, you want to add a list to that to kind of show them what the uh, – just go in and do SharePoint? it. You don't have to oh. do it from SharePoint. You can just add it from um, you know the plus. Add the, add the list and just show them that there are the templates that are there. That are the lists are a little more in depth. SharePoint, where are you? Lists. Okay, so we have a list here. Just add it. And you can see that it's a little more in depth than Planner. It's kind of deceiving. Just say create a list. Take a look at this. There are all the types of lists that are in there. So just do like the work progress tracker. Okay, let's take a look here. And it gives you an idea yeah. of what all of these, these, these pieces that are in place. Look at that. These, yeah. The full set and done that are already in there that you, you don't have to rethink it and you can modify these. 
Yeah, and you can you can customize this, right, Michael? Depending on what you want to do, it doesn't. Ha this is just a template. Right. These are all templates. There are tons of templates in there. Versus the planner is really kind of like a little higher end to do list. Yeah, it's like a high end to do list. It's the best way to put it. It's like project one. Yep. So you look at onboarding, right? You basically create. Um, and this is almost like a template of everything that you're going to need for onboarding an employee, right? I'm going to need to go ahead and give an intro to the team, immerse them in the product, give them a week one check-in, and I can use this template as a way just to kind of get this process started and automated. And you see uh, this can actually be completed by a certain date. It's going to have a relevant link associated with it. There's going to be somebody who's assigned to it. So similar process, pretty cool stuff. You know, they have their own different use cases, but... Ultimately, I think it's going to come down to what makes the most sense for your specific situation. We're happy to have a conversation about uh, what might make the most sense for your specific uh, organization. Uh, the planner is great if the person is working as a project manager. Absolutely, Marie. I'm totally in conjunction with you. And if you have a very, very complex situation, then maybe planner is not even going to be, uh, you know, as good as possible. You also have the idea of Microsoft Project 2, which is a whole nother level. Typically, you'll see a lot of construction organizations use this uh, because it's just got so many different moving parts to it, but it's a phenomenal application. Um, I got to learn that one a little bit better, but it's really cool. So, well, I would say you know, I, I would say view to do as your basic single to do list. The step above yeah. that is planner, where you could add that to a channel or a team. And that, that is really a group to do. And then if you need something that's project light, you go into the lists and utilize one of these templates because that kind of gives you a status across the way. And then on the higher end, you look at scale Microsoft Project. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so let's talk I about- have, I have a question yeah. on those. Um, so yeah. I don't, show, in my own teams that I have in my office, I don't have all those up there. I don't have notebook tasks. Is that like a, an add-on in Teams? So these are all here because I clicked on the plus, Ran, and I actually added them here first. Yeah, I don't even see them when I, because I tried that, and I don't see them when I click in there. I don't see those as options. Interesting. So uh, tasks. I, can, I, have, I have an answer for that for Ran. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's uh, provided by your Exchange Administrator as to what apps are available to you to be seen and viewed. So uh, send me a request, Ryan, and I'll get that going. Okay. <laughs> that, Thank thanks. you. Good point. As we showed you every everything, if you're forwardly thinking, you don't want everybody to stick every app that comes in. Because the one thing is if it doesn't say Microsoft on it, you know, those are the Microsoft ones are part of your subscription. Some of the others, I'll just call them as freemiums. You know, they come in and maybe they give you a, a test case and you have to su subscribe. Like as an example, there's a Zoom app. Well, you have to have a Zoom account to go out there. <laughs> you know, some of those exactly. are- Exactly. Other things. And then secondly, some of them do require you to give away everything, including your first and second born child. When you click <laughs> on it, you have to have the right right to a click through. So lots of times it's a good practice uh. to turn off those pieces and just add in the Microsoft ones that might be part of the subscription. Right. And that's a great point that you bring up, Michael, on the back end for us administrators. Um, as you see and and bring in other team members into sessions just like this, they'll learn about what's available is the best way to start adding them piecemeal. That way you've got a handle handle of it on the administrative back end and what's being applied to your tenant and your subscription. Uh, just, a, just a nice, neat way of allocating it and keeping it without having to pay anything. Right. Well, also you just don't want to have to answer the questions on like the you know, lottery bot that comes up and screws up teams. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I do to lock down and give people choices and let people know. And it's the same thing with Power Apps. Not everybody can run a Power App. That's right. Agreed. Okay, so we were talking about forums, right? That was the next question. I think this is a really cool topic. So let me show you. So into meetings directly, right? If I wanted to actually send out some polling uh, directly into the meeting, I would be able to do before the meeting, assuming you're the organizer. Sometimes if you have certain settings, other people can as well. Um, you can actually open up the meeting. So for example, this test meeting that I scheduled, 
And directly into the meeting, you'll notice there's another plus here as well. And so I'm going to be able to actually go ahead and create a form here. Add this directly into the meeting. And as I add this, you'll see I can start creating a poll here, right? Uh, the beauty of this, and I'll tell you just to kind of give you an example so you can understand from my perspective. I do quite a few of these labs, okay, all the time. And so one of the ways that, you know, I like to keep engagement is sometimes I'll have polls integrated. Uh, one of the things that I tried to do at the very beginning was I tried to actually create these inside of forms on the outside, okay, and then go ahead and get the link and send the link into the chat window to actually do it uh, and so that people could click on the link and then go ahead and, and actually submit an answer. What I ended up realizing was the, the friction that's caused there from them having to click on the link, open it up, and then respond, you get like a 20% response rate. It just, it just, you don't get the answers that you're looking for. And so what I ended up realizing was, hey, if I do this directly inside of the meeting, then I could quickly make it really simple for people to actually go ahead and respond to the poll as it gets sent out. So I could say, for example, I could create a poll here. This is only going to be multiple choice. I could say, for example, uh, did you like the lab? And then I could make the first answer yes, the second answer no, and I could save that. Okay, so that when I actually go ahead and I actually do this, if I join this meeting, let's say, just to kind of show this, and I'll block that use, continue without audio or video, just so you can kind of see this, visualize it. I'm going to join this meeting here online. And then as I go ahead and let's see, where is my forms here? I wonder why this is the old version. Okay. So what your point is, if I'm in here, I'm inside of the meeting, and I wanted to send out the poll. Uh, okay, Michael just did it in here. This will be an easier, an easier way for you guys to do this. So for example. Question, so. Yeah, this, this would be easier for everybody just to kind of see. Oh, there's a question. Let me go ahead and manage that. Uh, form app seems to be for surveys, quizzes, and polls. Yes, Marie. So the form app is going to be a great way for you. It's almost like Microsoft's version of SurveyMonkey is probably the easiest way for you to think about. Uh, you know, So, for example, I could go ahead and send out a poll here. I could say, um, did you like the lab? Right, and I'm gonna go ahead and say question yes, and then answer no. I'm gonna save that, and then now that that actually has been created inside of the polls here, I'm gonna then go ahead and send out this question to everybody here on the meeting. So if you're here inside of Teams, uh, don't take a look at the demo environment just for a second. Take a look here in your Teams environment. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this, and so you'll see uh, inside of your Teams actual um, meeting, you should have had a form, you know, go ahead and actually populate here inside of the lab where it says, did you like the lab? Yes or no. And you'd be able to go ahead and actually select a response that makes the most sense. And then Marie, to your, to, to your question, you could actually, so we're showing you to do the questionnaire polls thing from within Teams. Microsoft Forms is a full scale app that you could access through your portal. Uh, your, your portal.office.com, create a form that could be out there, could be a detailed like SurveyMonkey questionnaire, and then you can email that out to people. And it, we're just showing you the forms integration that ties into Teams, but the forms app is fully out there for you to create a, you know, a, a full scale form to survey out your clients. I can actually show you think, Michael, uh, it would be useful to show how to create a forms just in general through Teams. Yeah. Uh, OK, so let's go ahead and I'll show you. So I'm still sharing this page. So you can see here inside of office.com. If I go to all of my applications, so you can kind of see this. Uh, I should have forms. I do. OK, so you see right here forms is where you can create surveys, quizzes and polls. I go ahead and open this up and then here inside of here, I could then go ahead and click on new form. And you'll see I can actually create a more uh, complex actual survey, right? You give it a title. I could add new types of questions for text, for ratings, for dates, however you want to actually organize the question. Uh, but the, perp the, the purpose that I'm trying to show you here is that you can actually do, uh, you know, a variety of different uh, functions here that's going to be more complex than what you saw here today. Because what you saw here right now that we actually just demoed uh, during the lab is I really only showed you 
uh, how you could actually see uh, these forms appear inside of meetings. I'm not actually showing you how to do this um, specifically inside uh, of more complex questions where people can actually submit a long form answer. This is only multiple choice. So, you know, just something to think about. You know, there's going to be um, situations where you might want to use one or the other. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm telling you just in terms of response rate, if you're doing it on a meeting, uh, it's probably going to be a better option to actually do this, um, you know, with the forms integrated directly in. So something to think about. Uh, I see maybe another conversation here. It says, is it possible to show me? Thank you. Uh, does this make sense, Marie? Does this make sense? I see your type, so I'll just give it a sec. And while Maurice type in any other questions on what we talked about here so far, you guys could it be about forms, application integration, anything of that sort. OK, well, I got one more topic for you. OK, one more topic here. Um, and let me go ahead and get back here. Into this actual environment so you can see this so. The last topic that I wanted to talk about was the concept of making teams your unified communication as a service platform and what's inherently built into that question into that discussion is the ability to really make teams uh, work for everything that you need when it comes to communication both which you can see we talked about the chat before right the ability to make questions send documents and um, you know any type of um, information that you need to send over text. You can do that here inside of chat. This is going to integrate with your calendar. It's going to integrate with scheduling meetings and making calls, all of that from chat, right? I'm also going to have uh, the ability, if we start talking about voice over IP, of actually making outbound calls from an actual phone number directly inside of my team's environment. Now, why is this so important? I want to set the stage first, just so you can kind of understand my perspective. I don't think business is ever going to be the same again, and I don't say this in, you know, oh, the world is crashing type of type of way. What I mean by this is given the way that I think people have understood um, how impactful it can be to work from a variety of different locations, what in, is involved in this process, they've already gotten a feel for it. I don't think people are going to move back to a completely work in the office only lifestyle. Obviously, some organizations are going to do that, uh, but what I mean is holistically, I don't think that's what you're going to see. I think it's going to be more of a hybrid environment where people are going to be working both in, at home and in the office at the same time. And so what naturally comes into play with that is the fact that if you're going to be making outbound calls, you now need to have a mobile number a way that you can make calls where you don't have to actually be at your desk with the phone that's attached to and make those calls. You could, okay, you can absolutely attach voice over IP to the actual hard phone if you wanted to. Uh, but my point is for a lot of us, we're going to need the flexibility of something like voice over IP. And the beauty of building in the calling functionality directly into Teams is you're gonna get the added functionality of the Teams platform where I can access this again. You can see today we've been doing all this through the browser. I'm accessing this actual meeting right now through the desktop application, and I also have the application integrated on my phone as well if I want to make those calls. And so I am now going to have a way for me to have again this unified platform for communication because not only can I send messages and communicate that way, set meetings, virtual conferencing. I can now actually make phone calls directly from my team's environment, right? You can either go the route of actually having Microsoft directly provide you those calling services, or you can go with a third party provider that you're already comfortable with. And if it's possible to integrate them into teams, you're going to actually be able to establish a connection directly inside of the team's environment. Uh, I'm going to leave you with a couple other things to think about when it comes to voice over IP. And this is usually the one uh, that I like to hone in. Actually, I'll, I'll talk about one other thing first. You know, when we're talking about modern workplace solutions, okay, people typically compare, you know, the services that you get from Teams with a basic version of Zoom or Slack, and they try and, you know, get the cost comparison there. But in reality, what I'm trying to tell people is that the security, the enterprise rate security that's built into the Microsoft platform is only going to be on par at minimum with the highest level of products available inside of those 
other applications. And so my point is, you know, you're getting a lot of value for what you're already paying for. Most people, studies tell us that people typically spend anywhere from $50 to $70 per user on average on a modern workplace suite of tools along with the calling functionality. Okay, Anywhere in that range is typically what you'll see. Some people obviously pay less. Some people obviously pay more. But typically, it's in a $50 to $70 user range. The most expensive SKU with calling already built in and all of the security features, all the super awesome uh, you know, uh, uh, things that are built into the Microsoft 365 E5 SKU is going to be about $54 a user. So typically what you'll see, and I can't guarantee this, but I can say this with confidence, uh, the vast majority of the time, voice over IP is not only going to provide better value for your business, it's often going to actually be able to save you money because you're bundling services together. So again, I'm not going to guarantee you're going to save money, but I will guarantee you will get much better value for what you're paying for, and you're probably going to save money. So at the very least, I think it's something to consider, to take a look at, to see maybe, you know, this is something that I want to consider integrating into my team's environment because I'm already using teams for so many things. Why not make this ultimately that unified communications as a service platform uh, that's really going to be able to do so many powerful things for my business. So as you can see, there is a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot of moving parts here when we're talking about the team's application. Uh, you know, they're all over the place. There's a lot of different features that you can think about, a lot of different functionality that you might not have considered that can be built in directly to Microsoft Teams. And so you're going to want to consider, I'm going to challenge you all today. You know, when we're thinking about something that we're currently accomplishing, right, what are some, you know, further topics that we might want to have a conversation about? Do we want to think about Power Apps? Do we want to talk about maybe this voice over IP that I just talked about, these chat bots? maybe how we're integrating specific applications, right? These are all questions, these are all decisions that I think we need to be analyzing for ourselves because ultimately what we need to make sure that we're doing is that not only are we investing in the best technology uh, that's available in the marketplace, but we're also investing time and resources to really get the full power and the full benefits of what's possible with this technology. So you partner with us, we will make that happen for you. So. With that being said, I got 15 minutes left here uh, in the meeting, but I have concluded uh, most of the conversation in terms of the types of topics I wanted to get through today. I'm going to open up the floor for questions along with, you know, if Michael, if you wanted to add any, anything else sure. additionally to the lab, uh, love to hear from you. But that's what I want to talk about today, you guys. Really appreciate everybody's time. So part of what, uh, thank you, Andres, and everyone who didn't hear earlier, Andres is in California, so uh, it's an early morning for him. <laughs> On there, you know, some of the closing thoughts that I have on Teams, you know, especially with the um, the comments of of uh, one of the earlier gentlemen that came on on connectivity and getting in, is that you know, security comes at a price sometimes, and lots of times, as either the IT team or the outsource help desk team, we don't necessarily know what people are coming from or what they're actually connecting up with. So Microsoft has, as part of some of the things that Andres brought up has come out with the ability to go out and have passwordless logins. You know, company called Yubico that's in place there. So Microsoft has come out and, you know, and one of my devices is actually, uh, one of my devices is actually this small of the keys that go out there. So in the, in the next coming months, you'll actually see that you can onboard a new employee, ship them a new laptop that's Windows 10, have them be able to, have a, a cell phone that would have, you know, a, a cell phone that would physically go out there and have Microsoft Authenticator. You give them a temporary password, and lo and behold, you know, I slide this little device inside a, a USB port, and there's no passwords ever exchanged because that temporary password goes out there. And depending on where you're logging in or what you're logging through, we have to know browser, we have to know configuration. And then the second challenge that we've been having with a lot of our clients is going back to work. As they go back to work and they have that centralized conference room, you know, what's the password to log into that machine? How could I use Teams? And we have the same problem with Zoom, but we have these Teams room devices or Teams room licenses where as you schedule a meeting, you could schedule that meeting and kind of book that conference room. 
And then most people are coming into a lot of these call, a lot of these conference rooms now as we're socially distancing with some type of device. So with my phone and my Teams app, I can go out there and be able to just take over and physically take over the, the conference room to go out there and explore. But part of this is policies and procedures, looking at what you're gonna do, you know, remembering your password or you know, get into the new world of passwordless. And some of the Yubico keys are NFC, so it's touch, it's fingerprint, goes out there and those are just like your ID card. So we are getting there, security comes with a price that, that, that's in place there, but again, you know, there's a lot of good things to come from teams and you know, we all are challenged on some of those pieces. So I'll kind of open the floor up to see if anybody has any questions, any tech things they want to discuss. Um, yeah, um, if, if I want to further discuss about the Power Apps and what exactly I would like to accomplish, who exactly I could, I could talk to? You could um, reach out to me. I'm Michael Goldstein. I think I sent the original invite. So just ping me. We could schedule a call. You know, we have a full team of guys that are the, the, the uh, techs that work for us. And at least if, if we can point you in the right direction, because Power Apps is the newest, latest, greatest, and it's like the missing glue that ties some of these things together. So we're accessible to, to talk about the uses that we've seen and see how it fits into the world that you're looking to go out and, and create. Oh, okay, good. Thank so, you. And, and this was really just meant to give you an overview of what could be. A lot of those apps are in place there. And then, you know, you have forwardly thinking administrators like Paul that, you know, lock down a lot of things. So if those of you that are just users and not admin and you don't see some of the things, reach out to your IT team and ask, hey, I saw this. You know, is this something that's part of our subscription or, you know, I'm like I'm chatting back and forth with, a, a, you know, uh, Edgardo at, at GlobalX now and other pieces of software and things that are out there. So a lot to be gained in the suite and a lot to be able to put all this together and utilize it. And then just lastly, on, on the piece that Andres touched on on voice, there's various different calling plans that are, uh, that, that are in and uh, offered by Microsoft, whether it's full replacement of voice or you just need audio conferencing. But you also remember that if you're a multi-location organization, you know, you can call without any additional licenses on teams to teams without any calling plan. We have a few clients that have international offices and they're just using the internet to go through. So again, if anyone has any questions, feel free or we can give you back a few minutes of your uh, busy day. No, I just like to end Michael and Andres. Thank you again for such a great meeting and tutorial. And I can personally vouch for Land Infotech. They do have a great team. 